So how has my leadership skills and ideas improved the company? Uh, this is about leadership skills. So obviously, um, a leader must be full of creative ideas, must have qualities that can drive the business forward, and uh, have also qualities that um, can convince the team working uh, around him or her that um, you know, this is the way forward and uh, everybody abides and we have everyone's uh, buy-in. Um, but, you know, so in my case, um, we brought in some ideas, for example, in our company, um, we have changed a lot of the old ways that um, we used to um, do business uh, traditionally. We introduced new um, automated, uh, you know, processes that can save us money for example for the uh, HR for example uh, no longer do people have to uh, uh, come with a piece of paper and request approvals on uh, leave vacations and and the, and the like but they have now to enter on their uh, computer or even mobile uh, their uh, request for vacation and the manager would receive a notification and approve or disapprove of course the system would give him or her access to um, you know the person's uh, you know balance of leave and uh, that's uh, how um, you know he can make a decision or she can make a decision then it comes to me for final approval so that's uh, that's one of the things that we have decided to do to basically automate processes this saved us a lot of time made us more efficient made people happier and uh, obviously when people are happier they're more productive On another topic, which is about identification of problems and what measures uh, do we take to solve them. So basically, um, the ability to see in advance problems before they happen uh, is, is a superiority at work. Uh, and this is simply because uh, people have the business sense, they have the business acumen, and they could anticipate um, any problem, God forbid, before it occurs. But anyway, so identifying problems could happen through a series of things, could happen in a meeting, could happen through emails back and forth, uh, that you could spot um, some keywords in the email that trigger your sense of feeling mm, something is going not correct around here. And then you dig in and, and pull the information further and arrive at conclusion as to you know what really is going on and uh, and try to um, secure your your business and your company through um, either negotiation with the other party or uh, suggesting to your team what to do in case they are dealing directly with the um, client or the supplier and and so forth so that's that's how we take measures basically in our uh, journey of uh, automation and going through the new trends of um, finding new ways of doing things faster, smarter, cheaper, you know, and, and uh, more effective, uh, obviously that comes at a price which is people um, resistance to change. Um, change is, is inevitable if you want to improve and you want to do things better change is definitely inevitable. Now, a lot of people would resist you when you want to introduce new changes and would um, try to convince you that, well, it has always worked that way, we've always done it that way, and there was no problem, and so forth. But you can continue doing the same things and you continue having the same results. The name of the game today is to innovate, to introduce new uh, methodologies of doing things and, and save your business um, money as much as you can uh, obviously to a certain extent not to affect quality or people happiness and so on so um, an important factor is how you convince your team to buy in basically the changes you want to introduce and a lot of times you would gather your team around you and maybe um, do a coffee talk, introduce, you know, your ideas and, and get people's buying in uh, buying in that particular session. Um, you could have coffee, you could have, uh, you know, some soda, cakes, Pepsi, whatever, you know, the 
the thing might be. I mean, the most important thing that uh, we use in our company is that we um, do it in a way that it is not, you know, mandated top to bottom and so forth, but rather, um, you know, asking people questions, asking the team, what do you think if we became better here? We do that. What do you think between this and that, the old versus the new? And then you get them to uh, basically accept the change and be motivated about it because they would be the ones who um, uh, finally announce it, uh, not, not the manager. Well, as I said earlier, um, as efficiency and productivity is a, is a key element in, um, you know, in competition in the market, um, those need to be really quality assured. And um, with the introduction of automation and um, innovation, uh, a lot of time when you are relying on software and artificial intelligence and, um, you know, the Internet of Things and, and so on, um, you tend to want to believe that things are 100% accurate, but that's not necessarily always the case. So you have to have the human factor, um, you know, quality assuring that everything that you do is really up to the mark and up to the standard and uh, quality is maintained. Um, efficiency and productivity, yeah, they increase. And uh, with that, we have to manage the, the quality um, by going through different scenarios, by uh, analyzing what works better, what is, um, you know, more, uh, you know, perceived or received by the clients. And we put ourselves in their place and uh, basically role play in order to ensure that whatever we do to get better will also be uh, in reality, really better and more acceptable by clients. So as far as um, the different departments within the organizations are concerned, um, in our case, for example, in our company, uh, we have the HR department, we have the finance department, we have the sales department, the marketing department, the administration department, we have the IT department. So a lot of the uh, communication flow um, needs to be uh, maintained. So um, an important element is that people work together in harmony and people understand intentions and, and uh, you know, what people really mean. You know, somebody sends an email and the other person receives the email and says, what does that email mean? Um, the office is not big. I mean, it's, it's uh, you know, even if we're working across cities and across geographies, uh, a phone call always helps. And now with the technology availability, you know, you can actually do um, a call over voice over IP and you can, uh, you can ask a person about their, um, you know, intention, what they meant by that email. Uh, well, I quite didn't understand the email that you just sent. Can you please elaborate? You know, in a nice way, not just take uh, uh, defensive measures and, and assume that the other party wants to really you know, drill a hole for you so that you fall. No, that's not always the case. So in, in our case, what I usually, uh, you know, uh, encourage the teams to do is to talk to each other, dial each other, put themselves on conference calls on a, on a weekly basis, on a bi-weekly basis in order to, uh, you know, ensure that the um, information flow is, um, you know, going smoothly and people understand each other and work together in in harmony so um, on top of this we arrange a monthly coffee talk whereby people could you know step in voice their uh, opinions or concerns and we take those concerns very very seriously to address them and ensure that people are happy at all time our real asset is our staff and uh, we care a lot about our people and we love to have people feedback. That's what exactly makes us get better and better at the workplace. Uh, we also get uh, feedback from clients. So uh, we do ask clients what they thought of you know, the team serving them and uh, our services overall, our pricing and, and our marketing techniques and, and the strategies we follow. And we get a lot of feedback and we get a lot of time to um, make corrections and, and proceed further. That's the key to success.